Hi everybody, bit more Fender action this week. I could tell you that this guitar is a super expensive limited edition made in America custom shop, but I would be lying as it's a Mexican made Fender standard Stratocaster for about 650 quid. <laughs> Okay, so this is my Fender standard strap from about four years ago. These particular models are now discontinued and have been replaced and improved by what's called the Fender Player Series. Uh, if you go onto the Fender website, have a look, you will be surprised to know there's actually five different color variants in this model. You can still get this, um, this color and the picture on the website is actually what this guitar looked like when I first got it obviously made a few changes uh, you've also got a black one which i think is the only one without a maple fingerboard you've got a white one i'm not going to lie at this point that's the one i wanted when i ordered this because they did a white at the time as well but i needed one sharpish and this is the color that they had in stock don't regret it though because it's quite a classic look on a strat this um you've also got uh like an orange color and a blue color so good like variation in terms of colors for us lefties from fender with these player series and they're really good guitars for the money as well in terms of spec this and the current one's very similar although they've made some improvements and for the same price as well uh, alder body maple neck maple fretboard uh you've got medium jumbo frets nice tuners with the logos on stuff like that Here's the thing with the, the current ones, you also get better pickups because the original pickups in this weren't great, obviously, but what really can you expect for that sort of money? But they have now improved them. Uh, you also get the Fender F on the on the back of the, um, on the neck plate. You get an extra fret. They've made it a 22 fret, which makes perfect sense, as does what they've done with the tone pot. They've actually made the bottom tone pot here uh, now work for the bridge pickup, which makes perfect sense too. So uh, all in, um, you know, great guitars, great value for money. And if you've seen my uh, video on my blue telly, this is kind of a similar deal and they sound great. So you might have seen my video on my old 76 Strat. This guitar I actually got to replace that because it was that other one was getting a little bit old, a little bit unreliable, didn't want to keep taking it out on gigs and stuff. And I wanted something that I didn't mind if it got knocked about or damaged, which is why I bought this. Uh, and this that's why I went with the cheaper alternative. I knew when I, if I changed the pickups, it would bring it to life just as it did on my telly and various other guitars that I've changed pickups on. So, um, so yeah, I bought it mainly to do uh, theatre stuff. It's done a lot of pit stuff and you know all i wanted at that point really was for it to sound great and be reliable so far so good honestly i really can't knock these guitars and if you're someone who's just starting out and you want a really decent guitar as a first guitar or even as a second guitar these ones really are the ones to look at um so i obviously made some changes first thing to go was the scratch plate and i got a tortoise shell scratch plate and i changed the pickups obviously uh these are bare knuckle Irish tours and they are brilliant whether you're a fan of Rory Gallagher or not if you're not why not uh, but you know in essence they just bring uh, this strat to life completely regardless of what you're playing obviously when you get on high gain stuff like any strat it can start to get a little bit squealing a little bit leery here and there a lot of people like that though don't they so now I've owned it for quite a few years I'll tell you what I like about it there's quite a lot of things that I do like about it there's a couple of little minor uh, sort of minor things attention to detail things that I quite like about it for a relatively cheap guitar first thing is the branding on the back of the tuners I really like that rather than not being plain 
as are the saddles. Now, you're probably not going to see this, but I'll try and get it on the close-ups. The saddles have actually got the Fender logo on them, which is a really nice little touch. Unfortunately, they only obviously manufacture right-handed saddles because if you're holding the guitar up this way, the Fender logo is upside down. But I'm not complaining about that because it's nice attention to detail either way. You don't, like I say, on this one, on this version that I've got, you don't get anything on the on the back there, on the neck plate, that's plain. And I often thought that was letting it down a little bit. But now, like I say, they've put the Fender F on there. You can see that. Look, that's the old color from the old scratch plate on the back there too. Um, in terms of tuning, it stays in tune really well. Um, obviously, it helps the way that you put your strings on, so they lock up there. But for something with a flight and bridge, in general terms, it's pretty good in terms of tuning. I did a bit of self relicking on there as well, as you can probably see. Got the old craft knife out again, just to uh, make it look a little bit old and beaten in in various places. So yeah, it's uh, all in. I really do love this guitar, and like I say, so far has been super reliable. If it was to fall over or get knocked over or snapped in half by a monster, I wouldn't mind. All right, before we go, a couple of things I want to mention. Uh, first thing, I don't know if you remember the video that I did on my Martin Acoustic, the DX1AEL, uh, in which I had a bit of a rant about their website because it was kind of impossible to find anything left-handed. Here's the thing. Uh, the guys who are the distributor for Martin in the UK, a company called Westside, good bunch of guys. Hello, if you're watching. Um, they actually got in touch. They watched the video and they got in touch, said they'd seen what I said. And they explained that the Martin website is actually very new, the version of the website that's up at the moment. They've got a whole load of uh, little bits and pieces to do on it still, a uh, bit of fine tuning. And one of those is obviously the thing, the lefty thing. So they were quite glad to have it pointed out to them. They understand it's happening. They know it's there. They're going to improve it because like I said before, Martin, they do so many left-handed options. It will be great if you can get on that website and just look at them at a glance, which is great. Um, and lastly, I just want to say this week's recommended listening um, is something might take you by surprise. Who knows? Might not if you know me well enough. Uh, it's a album from the year 2000 by Dr. John. And the album is called Duke Elegant. It's a collection of songs that he covered that were originally done by Duke Ellington. And it is without doubt the most groovy album. I mean, I could have chosen uh, various different Dr. John albums, Creole Moon springs to mind because that's an amazing album as well. I want to thank Rob Butterfield, my old sparring partner from uh, the Marshall days on this one. Whenever we used to be driving to shows and clinics and stuff uh, in the van, he would always put this album on. And then I could never remember the name of it. And then recently I texted him, I said, what was the name of that album? He reminded me, I got it. And it's still an absolutely brilliant album, full of groove, uh, some amazing playing and that guy's voice, you know, uh, you can't really beat it. So that is it for this week. I hope you've had fun and uh, got some new stuff coming soon. Exciting times. I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>